Welcome back. We're going to start by taking a look at Table 714. Table 714 is the cash budget. Notice that it says first iteration. From the textbook, we know that cash budgeting is an iterative process, which means we'll do a first round, and then we're going to look at what we need and make modifications. And that is why it's very important to do cash budgeting in Excel. Otherwise, every time you make a change, you have to redo all the calculations manually. Most of the information we need for the cash budget has already been computed. Um, your beginning balance is um, given from the ending balance of last year. We have forecasted our cash receipt as well as disbursements. We did that in Table 12. Um, so we also know what our planned capital expenditure is. The only thing that we do not have is um, cash payment for um, borrowing. Uh, we know that we plan to purchase some equipment and we also plan to finance that with a term loan, a, a, um, which means it's an amortized loan. Table 713 is set up to um, compute that. So the next thing we're going to do is actually going to go back to table 713, finish the amortization table, and then come back to table 714 to, to complete it. Table 713 contains our planned capital expenditure. We plan to buy a truck, which will cost $85,000. We're going to put down $8,500 as a down payment. The interest rate is 4% per year but this is a monthly payment and it will, the loan is a five-year loan. So to compute this, we need to convert the interest and term to a monthly basis. We also need to determine what the loan amount is. Let's start with that. The loan amount is the amount that you borrow. So if the truck costs $85,000 and you're putting down $8,500, that means your loan amount is the difference between the two. So you plan to borrow $76,500. Your interest rate is 4% per year. Converted to a per month basis, we take 4% divided by 12. And the term is five years, which means, again, take five years, multiply that by 12. So we have 60 total payments. And we need to construct an amortization table. So this brings back some memory from uh, Finance 301, or Principle of Finance. So the first step is to compute our fixed monthly payment. We're going to use the payment function in Excel. So this is similar to the payment function you have on the financial calculator. The payment function is PMT. And the first argument, rate, is the interest rate. And the second argument, so it's separated by comma. The second argument is N per, that's the number of period, which is 60 months. And the present value, that will be the loan amount. The next two items, future value, so if you have a balloon payment or you have an end of lease value, you add that there. We do not have that in this case, so we'll just leave that blank. Typed. You can choose the end or the beginning. The end of period payment means this is an ordinary annuity. So you enter zero or you can omit it. If you enter the number one, that will signify that payment occurs at the beginning of the period, which makes this an annuity due. We are working with an ordinary car loan, which is an ordinary annuity. So we'll include zero there. So here is our um, fixed monthly payment. If you are not familiar with the functions, you can get help in Excel by clicking on this function symbol up on the formula tab. When you do the function um, table, it will give you the function and the argument uh, by giving you more um, explanation. So if you click on the rate, it'll tell you this is the interest rate per period. Uh, and per will tell you this is the total number of payments. Here's the present value and also the type. It says at the beginning of the period is one, at the end of the period is zero or omitted. 
Notice that it returns a negative number, and that is because Excel uses the same info, assum info and outflow for assumption that a financial calculator uses. If you do not want this to be display as, displayed as a negative number, we can put a negative sign in front of it. So now it shows us a positive number. Next, we're going to create the amortization table. Notice that the company plans to buy the truck in March. There's no payment due in the month that they purchase the truck. The ending balance when they bought the truck is the same as the loan amount. This is the initial value of the loan. The payment that they make is the same each period because this is an amortized loan. So we already computed the payment. We're going to make that an absolute reference because we know the payment amount will be the same each period. The interest is equal to the end, the period's ending balance, how much you still owe the bank, times the interest rate. The ending balance is going to change from month to month as you pay off the loan. So we will keep that a relative reference. Multiply that by the interest rate. This is a fixed rate loan, so the interest rate will be the same each month. We're going to make the interest rate an absolute reference. The principal amount is the difference between your payment and your interest. You pay the bank a total of $1,408.86. Out of that, the bank count $255 as interest, so we subtract that. The bank will count $1,155.86 as your payment. Your ending balance is equal to last month's ending balance minus the principal that you pay off this month. Once you have computed this, you can then copy this to future month. And you can copy this through the end of the loan. Uh, in this particular exercise, we are doing it only through one year to uh, through the end of the year for our cash budgeting purposes. But there's really no reason for you not to uh, complete the entire amortization table. To go down um, for a large table like this, you can hold down the shift key and press the page down key. And once you see the end of the amortization table, you can switch to the arrow key. And now we press Control V. And to again, notice that the copy function is still engaged. We're going to press Escape. Now let's go down to the end of this table. We can do that by holding down the Control key and the down arrow key. Notice that at the end of this loan, we pay everything off, which is what we expect to see because this is an amortized loan. Let's go back to the top. We can do Control Home, and that will take you to the very top of a, of a, uh, of a spreadsheet. Now we have complete, completed the amortization table. We can then move on to Table 714. As I mentioned earlier, we have computed the projected cash receipt earlier in Table 12. Let's make sure that we are on the active cell. So all we have to do is to pull that number from Table 12. We do that by using a cell reference. We start with an equal sign. We go to Table 12 and look for total cash receipt in January. That's all we need to and press Enter. Now you could, of course, um, open another window so it's easier for you to go back and forth. But in this case, the formula is very uh, simple. We are just referencing the number. We are not really creating any complicated formula. So it, it, I prefer to see the entire worksheet that I'm working with. How you do that is absolutely a personal preference. The more you do a uh, spreadsheet, the more you'll find your own personal style. Uh, total cash available is the sum of the beginning balance and the projected receipt. Cash disbursement, again, we have that computed. We'll pick that up. So start with an equal sign and go to table 712. Here's our total cash disbursement for January. We click that and press enter. Very important for you to press enter before you go back to table 14, 714. Uh, planned capital expenditure, we don't have any in January. We know there's one in March. 
And now I'll show you how we will get to that. And cash available before financing trans transaction is equal to cash available minus disbursement minus any planned capital expenditure. And cash from new borrowing, we don't have any in January, we don't have any payment, and we don't have we are not taking out any money. So our ending cash balance is equal to cash available before financing transaction. Again, these formulas are all available in the textbook. Um, plus money that you get from borrowing, minus money that you pay for interest, minus money that you pay for principal, and minus money that the owner take away. Now we have finished the formula for January. Because this is a uh, carrying over the first formula, in the beginning of February will be different. The beginning balance for February is the ending balance in January. So this is equal to the ending balance. The rest of the formula is the same. So we can actually copy that over. The copy function is still engaged. So let's press escape. Remember in March, we actually have planned capital expenditure. And starting in April, we'll have payment. So let's copy this formula over to March and April, and then we're gonna add those two elements to it. So press escape. In March, we know we're gonna have, we're gonna buy the truck. So I'll use the equal sign. Uh, and the amount is located in table 713. Remember that the truck cost is $8,500. we include the entire capital expenditure. At the same time, we're gonna take our loan in March. So again, we'll reference that and say equal. We'll pick up from table 713. The loan amount is $76,500. So the net effect is that your expenditure is greater than your loan, so your cash went down. And the reason your cash went down is because we have to pay the $8,500 down payment. We don't have any payment for interest or principal in the month of March, but beginning in, in April, we do have that. And here is a um, modeling dynamic. So I uh, I illustrate this as a um, as a demonstration. So when you create your amortization schedule, notice that you put the interest and principal in columns, but in table fourteen you're doing them in rows, which means that we will not be able to copy that easily. So this is an example where you want to plan ahead when you are creating your spreadsheet. Uh, this is intentional. I intentionally create this to demonstrate this point. Let me go ahead and show you what will happen. Let's say we create, we pick up the formula like we normally do. This is April interest. So go to table 713, April interest. Press enter and the uh, principal and say equal. Let's go to table 13, principal in April. Press enter. So we pick it up correctly, but if we copy it to May, we got the wrong numbers. This is E14, which is not the interest in May. So one option will be you have to do this one by one. And that will be extremely tedious. So there is a way around that. Um, to do that, I'm going to delete what we have entered first. I'm going to copy the rest of this formula over to December. Okay. And now, Instead of copying or entering, referencing the formula, um, the cells one month at a time, I'm going to reference the entire year. So to do that, I will first highlight the entire row. So I'm going to use the arrow key again. I do not like using mouse. You will notice that. So I'm going to highlight 
all the cells, so all eight of them from April through December. The function I'm going to use um, is not very common. So start with the equal sign. It's called transpose. And now I'm going to go to table 713. And this is the interest. So I'm going to highlight the interest till December. So make sure that is 8. I need to match the 2. Close parenthesis and press Enter. So this is now I have pick up all the interest for those months. I'll do the same thing for principal. Again, highlight the eight months that I'm working with. Start with the equal sign, transpose, open parenthesis. Let's go to the amortization table. Start with principal. Again, highlight those eight, eight months. Okay or nine months, I apologize. And then close parenthesis and press enter. And now you have picked up both interest and principal. So even though we did make a mistake when we lay out the um, structure for the amortization table versus the cash, pro, uh, the cash budget, there is a way to work around that. But a better approach will be to set design your table correctly to begin with. Finally, we can compute the year total. And the rest of this is relatively straightforward. But the beginning and the ending balance can be a little bit tricky. You do not want to sum up the year-to-date total for the beginning and the ending balance. In fact, you want the beginning balance to be the beginning balance. And then for cash received, you do want to sum that up. And for any subtotal, you want to compute it the same way. And for the disbursement, again, you do want to sum that up. The same for planned expenditures, you would also want to sum that up. Subtotal, we'll copy that over. For loan and disbursement, you want to add those up. And then this is a good check to see whether or not when you add up the total, do you end up with the same ending balance? And of course, you will. So here completes table 14. Remember that this is our first iteration in the cash budget. This gives us a rough idea of what will happen. Now it's time to strategize. The owner noticed that in March, they don't have a whole lot of cash. So they want to have more cash on hand going into March and April. At the same time, they notice that cash, you know, business start to pick up and they will be able to have a lot of cash on hand and it wouldn't make sense for them to keep carrying the car loan. In fact, they may be able to pay off their car loan by May. And that is what the cash budgeting process involves. In the first iteration, we lay out the base case, and then we look at what strategy we can use to make the operation more efficient. We want to have a safety margin and, theref and therefore avoid the situation where they run out of cash or may have to borrow at a high cost at the last minute. So what this owner decided to do is that they're gonna go ahead and take out a line of credit in February so that they'll have a higher ca cash balance going into March and April. They also hope to pay off the loan um, from the truck in May. And all this is explained in the textbook again. So if the, you wonder where did this come from, this is all from the textbook. Next, we're gonna go over how to implement these um, adjustments and that will bring us to table 715. Here is a template for table 715. In a real planning scenario, instead of re-entering all the formula, you will actually modify the table that you have been working with. 
In this assignment, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and re-enter the formulas for table 715. I have walked you through step by step so far for all the tables. And the, uh, everything that you need to do um, up to this point, up to cash available before financing transactions, um, I have shown you how to do it in table 714. So you'll, I'll ask you to do that on your own. The new things that I've added for table 15 is uh, items associated with the line of credit. The line of credit, when we take on a line of credit, we'll, we'll be able to, we need a line that recognizes the cash that we receive from the line of credit, interest payment on the line of credit, and principal repayment on the line of credit. So those are the three new line items that we need to add to table 14. I'm going to demonstrate another way to do this, which is to modify table 14 to add these three lines in. Here is the old table 14, which we only have cash from new borrowing. We didn't talk about what kind of borrowing this is from. So from table 14, this is the truck. So I need to be specific about that. In addition, you can highlight this, right click on your mouse and select the insert option. So I insert a line and this is also cash from new borrowing, except this is the line of credit. Need to do the same thing for interest. Again, need to specify whether this is for the truck loan or for the line of credit. Uh, the same thing for the principal repayment. Now, I'm going to get rid of the interest payment and the principal payment for the truck. Because after our first iteration, we decided that we're going to pay off the loan early. So everything else is the same, except we decided to take on some lines of credit. And if you look at table 15, those are given to you. Uh, we decided to take out 30,000 and 10,000 in March and February. Now we have to figure out the repayment. First, we're going to add to it um, interest payment on the line of credit. Line of credit is not amortized. You borrow the money and you pay interest on the amount that you borrow. In, since we borrow $30,000 in February, our interest payment in March is equal to our outstanding balance times the interest rate per year divided by 12 because it's 6% per year. And then in April, we'll have two line of credit or our line of credit has extended to $40,000. So we need to add our entire balance and it's also at 6% per year divided that by 12. In our note, we said that we intend to pay off the line of credit in May. So in May, we still have to pay interest, and the interest will be the same amount of $200. Then in May, we will pay off the line of credit, the principal. So we, since we owe the entire $40,000, we have to pay off the entire $40,000. So that takes care of the line of credit. Next, we have the truck loan. We take that out in March. So in April, we'll have to pay interest. So we're going to pick up the interest from table 715 in April. 
And we also have to pay off the principal in April. Our goal is to pay off the truck in June. So we have to do that for three months. Now you can use the range function as uh, the transpose function, but since this is only three months, I will just do that by hand. We still have to pay interest and principal in June. However, in June, in addition to paying the existing principal, we are also going to pay off the loan. So in order to pay off the loan, we have to add to that. So plus, we have to pay off not just the principal, but we also need to pay off the ending balance. So our June payment is the principal amount plus the ending balance. And now we have totally pay off both the line of credit and also the entire truck loan. And that is our second iteration. And now we're going to take a look at our ending balance. And notice that I have not updated the ending balance uh, formula when I added the additional lines. So I have to do that. So we have to increase, in, in, include the line of credit and I have to subtract the interest and the loan repayment on the line of credit. Okay. Now I can copy this through. Now if you look at the um, ending balance in each month, it is still low in March and April, but it's not as low as before. And uh, we definitely have sufficient cash to pay back our line of credit and the truck loan by June. And we still have a healthy balance for the rest of the year. This concludes the cash, for cash flow forecasting for an established business and the end of chapter seven. I'll see you soon again when we go to chapter eight.